So I was asked by a viewer, can I do a video including his car? Yeah, yeah, I can. So hi, I'm Dan, uh, this is Petrol Vectors. Uh, yeah, I've got a comment left on one of my Inkscape videos uh, from Alan, who asked if I could include his car in one of my videos. Uh, I didn't have to think about it for too long because uh, yeah, I'd love to do like, viewers' cars and I think this is gonna be um, a really cool sort of series. So if you want your car featured in one of my videos, just leave a comment below and um, we'll work something out so Alan's car then he's got a Pontiac G8 which for a car guy in the UK uh, I don't know a massive amount of these cars I know they've got some connection with the uh, Australian Commodores but um, apart from that in the UK we don't have much of a representation on these cars in fact if I just show you our most popular car sales website in the UK nationwide we have three for sale and the one in the middle here is pretty cool the 1996 with just 3,900 miles so that'll be a special car for somebody who gets that but for this video and actually the next two videos because um, I'm gonna make it into a little bit of a, a mini series on Alan's car uh, it's all gonna be about Alan's Pontiac G8 so just before we get drawing, I want to invite you to check out Alan's socials, his Insta account. He's got um, some more pictures of his G8 on there. I'll leave um, links in the description so you can check him out for yourself. And he's actually got his own clothing brand. Let's just pull that up. And uh, maybe you could just stop by, drop a like or two, and maybe um, say hello from me. Just a thought. Before I start drawing, I like to set up some rules for the image. This is to help limit the amount of elements introduced into the drawing and helps it visually read better when it's done. So decide on your line weights. I'll just zoom into this section here. For the out, outer line, I'll just pick up the node tool. The outline is the thickest line, uh, heaviest line weight I use on the drawing. And here I've used a 0.6. And then for panel gaps and major components, like this hood line here, I'm using a slightly narrower one at 0.4. And then for minor components and like this panel crease, just tap on that, I'm using a 0.3. Next up, you need to choose a color scheme for your illustration and make a swatch for it on the screen so you can quickly and easily pick and choose the colors as you go. You may benefit from making uh, a grayscale swatch as well. I didn't for this one uh, because I'm a reckless maverick with scant regard for the rules, but you may find it beneficial when you're starting out to do that. If you're struggling for inspiration with choosing colors, you can always head over to coolers.com and get some help there. So now we are ready to start drawing. I'm going to begin by replicating a bit of the bodywork here just so I'll show you how to do the reflections and we're going to pick up the pen tool we're already on 0.6 for our outline so I'm just going to quickly replicate that edge and just come up the back edge the back edge doesn't matter too much let's pick up the node tool and put some curves into this There we go. Uh, and now we need to fill this with the orange that we've got selected, the dark orange, which forms the base of the whole car. So we're going to the colour section and we're going to, need to pick up the colour picker and we're going to drag that across to our orange, which will set that as, as the orange we've, we want. And then it's just a case of clicking on the fill section with 
that color and that will fill your selection with the chosen color so now what we want to do is put in this little um, panel gap and we're going to put in that little crease there so now let's recreate the panel gap between the fender and the bumper so we'll pick up the pencil again uh, and we need to be on 0 0.4 for this one uh, it's just a simple s-bend so it's just a couple of clicks and then we're going to go to the node tool and just put the s-bend into it that's a bit strong let's just change that it won't really matter for this example but we'll try and get it as accurate as we can okay that's not too bad uh, now I want to put in this panel crease and for that we're gonna to have to be on 0.3 and that will need a little bit of extra work because we've got to put the sharp edges on on the ends so let's have a look so it comes in about there to there somewhere and then we'll pick up the node tool again and just put a bend into it so your default will always be a, a some kind of block edge in this case it's a sharp edge which can be changed by selecting different caps so you can put a round cap a uh, square cap like we had or you can get the cap to end on the node but we can leave it for a round cap actually it was on square let's leave it on square and then we can come into the pressure section here and we can change the edges and how we want that stroke line to behave by dragging down these ends and there you can see it's becoming a point now if I bring the other side down that other end will also become a point but we'll lose the middle completely so let's bring these right down to the bottom and then introduce a new node and raise the middle up and then we get this nice tapered stroke line so with our colour flat in place we can now start looking at the mid reflections which is the lighter orange now if I just turn back on the photo I used you'll see it's in a, a brightly lit artificial environment now I didn't want to copy the reflections here straight into the illustration because my original plan was to put this in a, a fictional setting which I'm still going to do uh, that'll come in another video but um, I thought if I copy like for like um, this artificial lighting it's going to affect what I can do with the the rest of the background so I came in with a, the idea of a, a light source that was kind of here and from the front so that'll give me a few options with what I can do with the background later so now we've decided to disregard the light source in the image and create our own we can start thinking about how that light is going to affect the bodywork so we need to select our mid orange so we go into the colors and pick up the pick up the color picker try and say that fast and uh, same as before we'll just go over here and drop that get the fill selected and select the color we want and then pen tool and we can start filling in these gaps so let's just start over here and we need to turn off our stroke effect just tap on there and reset the pressure it gives a nice flat edge and you want to kind of follow the edge of the bodywork but not all the way so you want to come into something like there what did I do over here follow the edge of the panel and then cut back in like that and then let's just fill it with our orange and while we're here we can turn off that stroke because we won't need the stroke for any of this and then back into the node tool this time 
and we can start playing around with these shapes and what I tend to do if I bend one way the next line I bend it the other way uh, it doesn't always work like here it depends what you're up against on the panel that needs to follow that edge let's bring it a bit closer and that's the same let's bend that one way So we get that kind of lit effect. In fact, let's just bring this one, let's bring this one this way and round that off just for a bit of variation. So there you go, that's like the first section. Now where the panel gaps are, you want to leave a darker edge. That gives the impression that the, the two panels aren't completely flat and they, they kind of bend in so let's just pick up the pen tool again and then we'll just mimic that line once again and that was a fairly straightforward drop down onto the edge and back up and we'll give that our fill And then let's just make it maybe a little more interesting. Let's just add a couple of nodes here so we can move those around. Okay, and that's basically it for the midtones. It's just a case of looking at where your panel work bends and where edges meet and where gaps are. Um, don't go right up to the edge, just leave a little gap and don't have things meeting. It's just, it just gives the, the impression that the, the panel work is round. If you come right to the edge, it will give the impression that the panel works very square and sharp. So I'm just trying to keep that, maintain that round edge like, like there's a nice round. Where there's a panel break, carry the light, light line on as if it was one complete block so now we just need to finish off our highlights by adding some little white selections on top of our mid orange so let's just pick up the pen tool once again and just add in some selections here and then just add some curves by deflecting these lines And then we can repeat the process on the next section underneath. So it's got a bit of continuity on the panel. And that process really is just what I've repeated right across the whole bodywork. It just takes a little bit of time and a bit of planning and you can get something similar for yourself. So a final word on using highlights in your work. If you want that extra glossy edge like I've got on the windscreen around the corner there and a few spots on the body, you may want to introduce a gradient into your selection. Let's just pick this one up to show you. And uh, Now the gradient tool. You'll see that I've picked up the white for the highlight color and then I've selected the underlying orange for the second color uh, and then just adjusted these handles as I saw fit I'll just deselect that you'll see that nice fade to nothing and it just gives it like that round shaped kind of feel um, but one word of caution when you use this if you are going to export this to another program as an SVG uh, say if you're going to put this into Inkscape Inkscape doesn't handle gradients as well as Affinity. It doesn't seem to. Um, and if you scale or change the, the image, you can lose that gradient information. 
So just be aware of that before you make too many changes. So that takes care of bodywork and reflections. If you've stayed with me this far, uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Please do consider giving me a like and subscribe. It would help out the channel loads. And if you want to see your car featured in one of my videos, just leave a comment and uh, I'll get in touch. And the next video is going to be on the headlights construction. So stick around for that and maybe check out some of my other videos as well. And yeah, I think that's about it. You can go now. See ya.